go. Well, hi, Nancy. It's hi, so good to see you. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm, I'm well. Thank, thanks to the EVT. Wonderful. So we're so we're just gonna have a conversation and, and talk to everybody. And you know what I would really like to do is I'd really like to go through where you were before you started, and kind of how it led up to you doing BDT. Okay. And then so we'll start there. So you were how long sick and how many co-infections and? Well, I had I had, was infected in 1998, okay. and went uh, misdiagnosed for. 11 years, and I did five years of um, antibiotic therapy and conjunction with holistic, uh, three and a half years of IV antibiotic. Now straight through. So your three yes. and a half years was continuous. Um, well, I my five, five, years, years, five years was continuous. I had a wow. year of IV in conjunction with uh, oral um, antibiotics and holistic, and then Prior to beginning BBT, I had had another two and a half years of IV, um, recephin and then vancomycin, wow. for three and a half continuous years. Wow, and you had a port. I did, and I was also getting IVIG every 28 days for three years. Wow. So, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of treatment. Um, I did make some improvement, especially earlier on. Yeah. Um, I failed to recover. And last May, uh, last May of 2014, I spiraled. I, I spiraled. I had a full, full-blown MS uh, flare. I wasn't able to move my legs. I couldn't stand up. Um, wow. Wow. Okay. So you were having seizures. Oh yeah. You were having. So you. So you were diagnosed with MS. MS and Parkinson's. Parkinson's. Well, my initial. Uh, my. My first uh, diagnosis was post-traumatic neuralgia. That was the, <laughs> what that is. That is, that is residual Post nerve pain from sh from shingles. Okay. Um, they said I've never had shingles, so <laughs> it was a strange diagnosis. So I have I have something that's supposed to be related to shingles, but right. I've never had shingles. Right. So it was a strange okay. diagnosis. Um, then I was diagnosed yeah. with chronic fatigue syndrome. Wow. So, and um, and then MS, and then Parkinson. Yeah, but you went on the MS meds. Didn't they put you on like MS medication? I was treated for MS, and I was treated for Parkinson. I was on Parkinson medication. Too. Parkinson meds too. Right. Wow. Um, and I think for like six years I was treated uh, for those two conditions. Wow. And uh, and but but it got worse. It got much worse. It got worse. Um, and I I lost a lot of weight. Um, I lost thirty eight percent of my body weight. That's big. So, yeah, I lost a well, lot you're of You're tiny. Weight. You're tiny anyways. <laughs> so you, you probably turned into a mirror image of your former self. If you turned sideways, you disappeared. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was, wow. I was skeletal. Um, I weighed, I think, 86 pounds. So just yeah. to give you an idea, um, my healthy weight was 127, um, 134. Wow. So, um, and then I now weigh about 123. So <laughs> that's the difference, right? Wow. Um, I, um. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I just, I continued, I continued to decline, and uh, the seizures were getting worse. I lost all feeling in my body. I had no feeling in my hands or my arms, my legs, or my feet. This is all nerve damage and nerve damage. Nerve conducted um, studies showed that every nerve and every nerve, every nerve group in my body was affected. Wow. Um, and then that's when they, that, that's when that was the first time I heard ALS. Um, and that's scary. Yes. I, I can't imagine like someone's telling you, oh my gosh, you may have ALS. Now, for norm, for anyone who knows anything about ALS, that's kind of a death sentence. It's kind of like right. a ALS. Two years. Two years. Two years. Mm -hmm. So what? When when they told when they said ALS to you, I mean that must have been scary. That must have been like, oh God, you've got to be kidding me. It was like it a big cosmic joke. I mean, well, my, my, now I'm thinking. Okay, so who who has MS and Parkinson? I mean that that's strange. And, right. and then, you know, and I, and I, I was so proud of myself because I had, I had adapted to that diagnosis, I had adapted to that condition. And, you know, I was very proud of myself because, you know, I, I, I adapted. And then when, when I heard ALS, it's like, really? Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, because, you know, and that was one of the things I thought, too, was how can you have all those things at once? How can you have Parkinson's? How can you have MS? How can you have... You know, and all these things. You know, and that's and one. that's when I that's when I was I, I was started to begin to think, okay, there's something else going on here. There's an underlying factor here yeah. that is causing all these other conditions. Right.
when you, okay, so you had Parkinson's, uh, you, had, you had MS diagnosis, Parkinson's diagnosis, right. then they were saying ALS, right. which is ALS. scary. What was the thing that made you think Lyme disease? Well, you know, I, I had actually thought Lyme when I, when I was first infected, and I went to the doctor, and I actually um, had a bull's eye rash. So you remember having the bullseye rash? I know exactly when I was infected. I was infected at Missouri State Park on a camping trip. Wow. Um, and there was no tick attachment. It was a, it, I got bit. It was a bite so you and never, run. So you never saw the tick. It was a right. bite and run. A bite and run. It was a bite and or run. Or it was so a tiny and attached. You never saw it, and it just fell off. And then all of a sudden, you were developing this. Well, I, I, know, I know it wasn't there. Um, and then I know, you know, I know that there could not have been a tick at that part of my leg for, you know, an right. hour at the most. Right. Okay. Oh, a bite and run. Okay. It was a bite and run. Bite and run. That's good. <laughs> I like that bite and run. It was a bite and run. That's good. And uh, it was a couple of weeks later, two or three weeks later, I, I wasn't feeling well. Um, a little flu-like, but I, I, I mean, I didn't, I saw something ever got, I maybe had the flu a couple of times in my life, so, um, so I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on the flu. But it felt a little bit fluish, and I felt a little achy, a little tired, fatigued. I was still, you know, able to work. I wasn't in any bed or anything like that. It was just it was very mild, and but I had this rash. So I went to the doctor, and um, I asked the doctor if it, if it could be Lyme, and he said no, it could, no. There's no Lyme in Missouri. There, there's no Lyme in Missouri. There's no Lyme in Missouri. No Lyme. Well, of course not. And he diagnosed me with a spider. Did bite. you tell him about the bullseye rash? Well, he saw it. He said, and I told him I didn't feel anything. Oh um, my gosh, okay. Yeah. And he said, well, you know, there's no Lyme in Missouri. And he diagnosed me with a spider bite. And he did prescribe 10 days of antibiotics, which I took. Wow. Um, wow. He also prescribed 10 days of steroid, which I took. Um, well, yeah, why wouldn't you? I mean, here's, you, you're at your doctor's. There wasn't a lot talked about. There was not much talked about about Lyme ever. No. no. Back in, you know, early 90s, mid 90s, later 90s. This would have been 98. Yeah, and, there, and there one was, no one was really talking about Lyme disease. No. It, it was on, wasn't on television. It wasn't on, it's not something that would really cross your, cross your radar. Or had you, had you ever seen a bullseye rash never. before? Never. Yeah, never. Um, um, never. And um, after the 10 days of antibiotics, the rash was still there. I could you know, clear up, and he prescribed, you know, another 10 days of antibiotics yeah. and steroids. I did not take the steroids, I took the antibiotics. Right. Um, and I, you know, I, my memory's foggy. I still have some gaps in the memory because I, have, I have severe cognitive impairment. So we're, so, so all this, the bullseye rash, doctor prescribes just a couple, 10 days and then another 10 days of antibiotics and that's it, it's kind of the spider bite. Well, you have a, you know, some nasty spider bite or whatever. Right. And then all these diagnoses later, Parkinson's, MS, ALS, all these diagnoses later, so now we're going to fast forward to... Well, there was also the diagnosis of, you know, of hypochondria. <laughs> I don't know if that one, too. It's all in your head. It's all in my head. Maybe you're just not getting enough attention. <laughs> How many people have heard that? You're just a pretty girl. Maybe you're not getting enough like attention. Women. I don't think a man's yeah. ever been told that. But yeah, a lot of women are told that, you know... Well, I think men are more told to, you know, don't be a baby, just suck it up. You're supposed to be a man. You know, just handle it. I think a lot of men's fear in the Lyme community is that they're just, they're just, they want to be a man, they're the provider, they're the strong one, and I think a lot of them hide, they, they hide it more. They're more so in the then, closet with, with the disease. I think they are too, oh definitely, yeah, and I don't blame them, you know, it's, it's a really, it's a strain on our egos, <laughs> self-esteem issues, all the things that come with it. So fast forward to, you were on the IVs. Mm -hmm. You were on all the meds. You had the right LLMDs. You know, you did. kept changing. I was, very, I, was, I, was, I was one of the fortunate ones because I got treated, you know, which so many people don't, they, they don't get diagnosed or any treatment. So I did get some treatment. It just, it wasn't, the treatment wasn't enough. I mean, despite all the treatment, it was, I had over a million, one and a half million dollars in treatment for Lyme disease. $20,000 a month. That's was huge. Treatment. Right. That's huge. That's a lot. And then you were doing supplements, I'm sure, and oh, herbs and all that. I was thinking detoxing and addressing biofilm and cysts and, and you know, doing all the right things. 
I mean, it just wasn't enough. I, I failed to recover. I did, I did, uh, I did make some you know, progress initially, like I said. Right. I regained some cognitive function. Uh, I, I had lost the ability to read or write. Um, I was not, I didn't even recognize uh, words as language. So you couldn't read or write. So you got so far down this path and made some a little bit of progress with I some of the know, treatments. I didn't know my name. I could not remember my name. I got lost in my house. Um, there's nothing. So I ever have in the Alzheimer's uh, stuff. It was, it was, it it was, was advanced Alzheimer. The um, I didn't recognize my children. I didn't recognize my children. I didn't recognize people. Um, I, wow. More than once, I was trapped in the bathroom because I didn't know how to get out. I didn't know how to open the door. Wow, it's 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 sad. It's, it's rough. It was rough. It's, the nice thing is, is that we get to sit here now, where where we are in our lives now. You gonna make me cry? <laughs> oh, oh gosh! It's been a long way. It's been a long, long. Where journey. we're sitting now, and to where we, everything that we've come through, and everything that we've had to deal with and go through, to be able to sit here now together. After all of this water under the bridge and all the Lyme horror stories and the, you know, I mean, we're, we're very blessed. It's a miracle. We're really blessed. It's a miracle. So you start. So so I so I was talking to you and I said, okay, Nancy, you, you got to do this. You know, I, I get you're like I don't know what else to do. You know, they, they, you encouraged me for a year. Sort of, it took me it took me a year to come to my senses to do this. <laughs> I did, but you it did. Took, it took an, it took a, it took a, it took a spiral of an MS flare. So you have that, when did you have that aha moment? When, um, ah, when, I, when I lost the use of my legs um, after five years of aggressive, ongoing treatment. And my, you know, I was terrified of, I was terrified of going back to where I was and that's where I was headed. Um, Even with the aggressive treatment? Right, and you know, I mean, the definition of insanity is to you know keep doing the same thing you've been doing and expect a different result. Right, sure. five years was long enough. Yeah, there was a long time. There was nothing left. That's a long time to be continuously doing treatment after treatment and, and not it getting... was it was continuous. Um, the, it was interrupted. I, I did have a stroke during that time, um, so yeah. there was that, and my treatment was discontinued while I was dealing with the stroke. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was it was continuous. And I was under the care of an LLMD, you know, yeah. for, the, for that period. See, because I know that, you know, for a lot of people it sounds crazy. Oh, you're stinging yourself with bees. Well, you must just be crazy, right? This is so far out there, so far-fetched. And, and, it, and it, it sounds crazy to those who have not tried it, who aren't aware of what we're experiencing right. and what we've experienced. So, so you went from that, okay, I'm not sure about this, and then everything was spiraling down. Mm -hmm. And then you had that moment where you couldn't walk. And you're like, I really need to do something different. I've got to try something different. A lot of people get to the point where it's it's do or die. They they know that if they don't do this, it's going to take them almost being on their deathbed to have that leap of faith to say, you know, it's, it's well, this. And, 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 and to it than just the illness. There was a, I mean, than just being not well. I was in excruciating pain, and it was ongoing, nonstop, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, year after. Year, and I was on massive doses of narcotic medication to control the pain. Yeah. And it, yeah. by control, I mean like the best it was ever were five to seven on the pain scale. Oh and God. that was I mean, Oxycontin, Oxycodone, Percocet. Right. I mean, I was on some strong trying to, trying to control the pain and trying, trying and to take the edge off. And it wasn't enough. Yeah. And it wasn't enough, and the pain was increasing. Um, wow. I wasn't able to handle any. any uh, Pressure changes, you know, the yeah. you know, slightest change in the pressure, and I was seething and pain. So I needed, I, I, had to, I had to do something different to address that. Yeah. And uh, so now, you know, here I am, almost 17 months later, and I'm on no medication. I don't okay, so medication. you started. This is where <laughs> this is the exciting part because I mean, we've been down, we walked through hell. Every person who's gone through Lyme any long period of time know that you literally are walking through hell. And every day is like a surprise. I call it the surprise disease because you never know what's coming next. You, you think it can't get any worse, and then it does. Well, a friend of mine said to me, you know, 
Yeah. Surprise, you're going to have seizures today. Nancy, lucky you. Some people, you know, you get Parkinson one day, you're messing up, you know, another, you, you get Alzheimer's. Some people are stuck with the same old disease, but you know, with Lyme, you get them all. You get a mixture of a surprise, you, because this kids today can't walk, and surprise, you know. Whole mix. You get all the whole you get, the you get to experience everything, right? You, with Lyme, you're getting to experience. You get to experience paralysis. I did paralysis, MS, Parkinson's shakes. You know, oh, yeah. Alzheimer's. You know, you don't even have to be old. <laughs> we get to experience Alzheimer's young. Who moved for us? So, so then, so then you started the be venom therapy. I remember. The, I remember when you started. I was just like, yes, thank you, God, because I knew you were really sick, and I knew that if, if anybody could jump in there and do this. And, and really, you know, do, it would be oh, a life job. So, so I was so thrilled that you were like, yeah, okay, you know what, I'm going to do this. You just made that decision and that was it. And so you started the on therapy, you started the ramping up. I did. Okay, tell us, I, I know everybody, including me, wants to hear this. How did I ramp? How did you ramp up and I how did you feel? I went for it. I just went for it. Um, I, how did you feel? Do you remember how you felt as you were ramping up? Uh, well, I mean, I was very ill coming into this. Mm -hmm. There were no good days. It wasn't, I mean, there were no good days. Right. I was, Every day was one, one was Ill. worse and worse than the other. I was ill. Um, and, you know, the, the first, first couple of months or so, first few months, I was not, I was not feeling good. <laughs> um, I can't even say I was hurt. I just, I was ill. Um, do you remember, do you remember that moment when you realized that there was some light? That, oh my gosh, there really is something to this. Because, I mean, I know every, the first three, four months can be just awful. Right. People go through, you, you think what, whatever symptoms you have can actually be magnified, and it can actually be worse. And, and the first three or four months I know can be really bad, but do you remember, do you remember when you had that light where, because I've seen it with several people, including myself, where you have that moment where you go, you know, there really is something to this, and you know, I, I'm starting to see that ray of hope. I, in this, I, rem I what I remember was I remember a lift in my fatigue, and uh, and I do remember that I was hurting when it happened, and that surprised me because I was used yeah. to a hurts being debilitating, and I was still hurting. I was feeling it. I wasn't feeling well, but I didn't have that you know where I just I'm too fatigued to breathe feeling. Yes, where it hurts to breathe, right. you're too tired to breathe. So I remember that, and that was probably around three four months, maybe a little bit of a, and then I remember. Waking one day and feeling like me. I was not well and I was in pain, but here I felt like me. Um, and yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> these are those those these are those those light moments I'm talking about where the light goes on and you go, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I knew there was something to it. Then. I can potentially be me again. Right. And I know. Prior to that, I really, I, I, I thought I was long gone. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then we have those moments. It, t it takes time to get there, and, and, it, and it's not easy. Oh my God, I, I constantly express to people, this is not easy. This it's isn't not a, I'm going to get stunned one time, and woo, I feel great. <laughs> you know, if you, are, uh, if you are literally almost on death's door, and you have... And you have gone down this road through so much, and you have experienced so much pain and so many symptoms and so many things and so much. And when you start, you know, it's it's not an overnight instant. No, it wasn't. Oh, it, I wake it, up and I'm feeling, oh, I'm waking up, I'm feeling great. No. It was not a steady improvement either. I mean, it was um, up and, and down and up. up. In retrospect, I can say, yeah, no, it wasn't easy. And it was, you know, it, it wasn't easy. But to me, from my perspective, it was so much easier than what I'd been doing. Right. You know. Right. With the port and, and the I mean, IVs shooting and up pick lines. Shooting up vancomycin every 12 hours, 67 pills a day. You know, right. IVIG, which is, a, you know, for me, it was a four and a half hour process. I mean, it was just constant. And yeah. with the, with the um, even therapy, you know, it was every other day, three days a week. You know, it what? You know, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. <laughs> and, um, 30 minutes. Boom, and boom, I, boom. I did have a reprieve. I would sting and then I would have a reprieve and feel a little better. You know, at least for a little while, 
before I started feeling ill again. And just that reprieve was huge because I had had no reprieves prior. Right, right. You were in a constant fight, constant fight, it's constant, constant dealing, constant trying to mentally deal. It was right, constant. It was constant. There, there was, was you know, know, that moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I, I can actually think, not think about it for a minute. I can just not, I don't have to spend the day horizontal. I can get up today, you know, and that had not happened. Um, no. Prior. So that, that was, that was. Okay, so first three or four months are rough. You know, you keep going with some hope. See a little, little bit of, little reprieve. Right. You know that that gives you just a little hope that yeah, maybe there is. Okay, how long has it been now? Seventeen months. Right at so almost seventeen. Months. Almost seventeen months. I'm a week away from seventeen months. Something like. That. Okay, so you're in fifteen hundred stings or more. 1800 over states, 2000. Over 2000. Okay, see how bad I am because I haven't done this. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't count. I didn't mess around with my ramp day. Okay, you went I'm, right. I'm, 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 you know, I, well, I was a contractor. I think some, some, of our, some of our friends know that. It's like, get her done. Okay, get her done. <laughs> get so her you done. ramped up really fast. Um, well, I, I ramped when, up, I ramped up um, by two stings um, every third session. And so Every third session, by two, right. and so then by the fifth week, sixth week, I was at you were already at ten, and and it was it was three or four months before you started seeing right. this little reprieve and this little because right. you know I, we have a lot of people who think that okay I've been stinging for a week I should be better. I just sometimes don't even know how to answer that. I try to just avoid <laughs> even discussing that because because I, I haven't seen that yet with anybody, that they stung for a week and, and all of a sudden they were feeling better. I, I have heard but, of, of a few people that, you know, feel a little bit of a boost. Boost. In the, right. Yeah, and you know, and that depends, you know, that's depending on... Be, but that's not to be confused with being better either. Oh, yeah. Right, and not to be confused with, you know, so most people who've been really sick for a long time and have lots of, you know, co-infections and stuff, <laughs> it's, it's four, five, six months. But but the but you keep getting a little bit of oh I have a little more energy oh I'm, I haven't spent the day in bed I'm actually out of bed. Um, it's a couple of people at three months they they they're out of bed you know who went from bed reading to but but with you so so you went so you would say four or five months when do you re, do you remember you probably remember but better than I do because it's been so much time between my my thing and now do you remember when when you put together your first like good days. Like where you I remember where you that. slept good, you woke up and went, wow, I feel rested, and then you had a good day, you know, when you just weren't in pain and you weren't in it. Do you remember when you started putting together days? You know, around that five to six month mark, um, by by eight by eight months, I was feeling I was feeling well most of the time. You, at eight, eight months, you were feeling well most of the time. Okay, um, I know that this time last year, uh, last Thanksgiving, so I was I started in July, August. So like four, four and a half months in, um, I was well enough to host Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, and I did, you know, I, I did, it didn't require me escaping to, you know, some place to lie down or, you know, I was I was well enough to do that. Um, so that was a huge improvement. Um, I wasn't even able to handle more than one or two people in a room at a time. Right. You know, so the right. fact that I could host everyone here in my home, that was, that, that was wow. huge. And, wow, that is huge. And. Um, by, I was able to go off all pain medication um, around that time. Nice. I was off all pain meds by that time. Four and a half months in. Yeah. I was still. In, I was still. I mean, I was still in pain, but my pain was reduced enough that without the pain meds, it was about the same level it had been with the pain meds. So oh, wow. okay. I was kind of like at a five to eight, you know, right, um, without any medication. Cause that's amazing because I because Nancy and I I got to I, I'm so grateful that she's the hostess with the mostest too because I got to come and spend Thanksgiving with Nancy and her family and her beautiful daughters and her wonderful companion Tim and and they have been just the most gracious hosts but you were like going and going I mean you almost wore me out yesterday because <laughs> you were like the Energizer Bunny. You were like, okay, we gotta do this, and we gotta get this, and we gotta get this, and you were like, da, 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 in the kitchen, and you're putting this whole meal together, and 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 she had she had almost like a house full of people, you know. And we were people. up to three a.m. the night before. We were up till three a.m. the <laughs> night before, and and then you were up early preparing everything, and then she did this host of this whole dinner, and 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 then we were up pretty late last night too, still going considering. 
but you were amazing. You looked amazing. You uh, you looked like you felt amazing. I, I mean, like, I feel fine. I, I, I feel I feel fine. I feel. Do you remember when that kind of social and everybody was talking? We everybody was talking to each other. We were all having these conversations, and this went on for hours. Do you remember when just trying to hold a conversation with somebody for thirty minutes was exhausting? Oh, yeah, One person. And and look what happened yesterday. I mean, oh, beautiful. So yeah, Thanksgiving dinner was was amazing. It was a pleasure, and and so many wonderful people, and your daughters, and and so from a, so in a year, I mean, from last year to being on the Be Venom Therapy for four and a half months, and being able to to host actually, to to this year, I mean, what amazing progress! What a I mean, you look great. You really do look great, and it's such amazing pleasure. The last time I saw my uh, LLMD, um, she burst into tears. She could. Okay, when did you see your LLMD recently? Um, it's it's been a while. It's been. Um, she, she unfortunately has had to give up her, her practice. And she's not even practicing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's too bad. I was she's about bad. last time I saw her. I was about ten months in. Ten months. Ten okay. months in. And um, and she she. she she cried, she cried and, and, and asked to take a picture. She took a picture. Oh my gosh. She said she could not believe the difference that, you know, a year had made. Wow. Two months had made. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Well, that's incredible. I'm still so blessed, Kelly, and I'm so thankful for you and uh, for Beaven Therapy and the Bee Bus Mission. The Bee Bus Mission. <laughs> Growing strong. Yeah. Do, do. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, you look great. Thank you. It, it, and you have lots of energy, and you have. It's so it's so nice to see you <laughs> looking so good. <laughs> I've been. This has been a pleasure. This has been a, an amazing experience because I've known Nancy for quite a while, way before Be Venom Therapy. She, Nancy was a huge advocate um, in the Lyme community. She helped a lot of people. You helped a lot of people. I tried. You know, I tried to help people with get help them get their social security disability, help them get grants, help them get treatments. I mean, you did a lot of advocacy stuff, and I watched a lot of people not recover. I I watched I've seen way too many people die. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, and we've lost a lot of people in the last you know 15, 20 years, especially the last couple of years has been rough. The last few years has been way many people every so, And I, I'm still trying to do my part in the life community, but now it's nice to see people. Getting well, recovering <laughs> for a change, for a change. Isn't that isn't that a amazing? change is good? So, and, and Nancy, how, you have your group healing, healing line along with Be Venom, and you have. I mean, your group is growing huge. You have it's a lot. We're about of, six months old now. You have a lot of people on that group, and I'm just like, I see it, and I'm like, wow, this is this is incredible. All these people who are healing and. And, and people are coming to your home, and, and Nancy's traveling to people. I mean, she's, she's getting out everywhere. You've had three people today that you've, three or four just today, that, and you've had to drive an hour and a half in the rain <laughs> to go help somebody. It, it, is such, it is such an honor to not only be able to help, but um, you know, I'm just thrilled that I can drive. <laughs> <laughs> the fact she can drive an hour and a half. And not at all. Much I was th I was thinking. Well, you know, back back before before Be Venom Therapy, you know, got, I mean, getting lost just a few miles from your own home. I wasn't driving. The seizures yes, and the and the cognitive. I wasn't driving. You, you just can't even drive. But to be able to get out. Now, I mean, so you know how I feel about getting out and driving across the entire country. I'm driving from state to state to state, and and with Lyme, I would have never been able to do that. That that just wouldn't have happened. You know, I, I wouldn't be lucky to drive home from two miles to the grocery store and stuff. But. But it's it's just such a pleasure, and I'm all, we're watching all these people heal, and we're watching all these people, you know, get better. And and, and you, I mean, you're there was there was there was Rhea Carlson, um, Dr. Klinghart had had information out there about bee venom therapy. He had already stopped doing live bees. He went to injections, which he's now stopped because he realized that in, injections just are not uh, as they're not you're, you're not going to recover. With injections, it's going to help with symptoms and stuff, which is good. Um, but you won't fully recover. But, 
but there was there was Rhea and, and myself. I started a lot of people on veganum therapy before you started, but they stopped. Most of them had stopped within a year. You're the first person after Rhea and and myself, you're you're the first person to, to be almost to do this and to stick with it and to be to be almost finished, to be almost at the two years. Oh, thank God. So I, I thank God you did is right because because you're a true testament to to so many other people that you know. Well, there were you know there were there were periods I I I never questioned whether this therapy was the right thing for me to do. That was never a question. So 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 you had you had literally gotten to the point where there was nothing else left. There was nothing else left, um, and nothing had worked. Um, I was also I was also you know severely immune deficient. My labs looked like AIDS, but there was no HIV present. Yeah. So that's something else I was dealing with, and I, you know, um, and there was nothing else left. So, but you know, during the course of my vegan therapy journey, um, you know, old symptoms were coming up. Um, just as you know, as soon as I thought that the MS was resolved, I have a flare. Yeah. Um, but I knew, I knew in my my soul that it was going to be okay. I just needed to get through it. I just needed to keep going. And, uh, you know, I had faith that this is going to work. Um, you know, I had you as a, a wonderful mentor. And, you know, it worked for you. Why won't it work for me? You know, it was right. it, um, I never questioned whether, um, I, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to question whether it worked or not. I didn't want to go Right, there. right. Um, because I, it was I, that, or it was this or not, I mean, nothing else is working right. anymore. So I just made a commitment. I'm going to do this. I'm going to stick with it from hell or high water. I'm doing that. So from where you started, <laughs> so many months ago, to where you are now, would you, would you say, I don't know how to put this really, all that you've come through, I mean, you walk through the fire of lime with the co-infections, the Bartonella, the Babesi, the Microplasma, I mean, just stack the list because there's probably right. things you weren't even, there were probably things you had that you weren't even tested well, for. Well, I know that I have Epstein Barr, um, and I, I know that uh, I, I have a virus that the lab wasn't able to identify. Um, oh, that's right. You have an unidentifiable, un unidentifiable virus. Right. Um, it, so with all these things and with all that you've come through, so where are you now? How do you feel now? Like, like if I were to say to you, Nancy, you know, I'm really happy that you did be venom therapy, and I'm, I'm really happy that you jumped in and did this, but... But, but truly, I mean, the only thing that really matters in any of this is how do you feel about your life? I yeah. love my life. I love my life. <laughs> and, that's, and that's where it's at. Because, you know, quality of life, we're, we're both going to start crying here, okay. Quality of life is so important. Quality of life matters. And um, there was a... There was a not that long ago that I tried to take my life. So, um, I'm just very grateful. So to see you today running around with all these people, <laughs> driving an hour and a half to go treat somebody else with B-Venom therapy. <laughs> and all the people, she's online on her group. Yes, she has a group. I have my group online all the time. We're just checking in, making sure everybody's okay, making sure all the questions get answered and everything. But, but yeah, we're so bad. <laughs> Oh my gosh, sweetheart. Isn't it incredible? So we, we get to look forward to the rest of our life. Yes, we do. We get to enjoy, we get to enjoy our, our children. We get to enjoy everybody that we meet. We get to have this amazing appreciation for life. Life is good. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> oh, God bless you. God bless you. What an amazing journey. If you, okay, we get tons of questions on our groups, and, and I know that, you know, we're going to post these on our groups and let everybody watch this, but, you know, we get a lot of people who say, well, I'm not sure if this is going to work. I'm not sure if I should do this. There are a lot of people sitting on the fence, and, and I understand that, you know, because a lot, like I said, a lot of people have to get to that point where it's like kind of do or die. I was on it's the fence. Like, I was on the fence for, you know, a you year. On the fence you were on the fence for a year. What is the one thing... If, if you could tell everybody who's out there sitting on the fence, 
waiting, going, hmm, not so sure. If there was something that you could say to them that might encourage them to, to not wait so long. I think the only thing I can say is my only regret is that I didn't start sooner. That's my only regret. I didn't start sooner. If you didn't start sooner, I could have saved myself a lot of pain and suffering. My, own, my, my only regret is that no one ever told me about this. <laughs> no one ever mentioned this in those 15 years that I was walking through hell. I want to talk about, okay, so the, because I remember when I, when this whole thing first started and, and I had to, I, I was writing out the protocol to what I had done. I was writing it out to every person in every single email. And then I realized, okay, this is not working because there were way more people sending me emails than I had time to literally write this up. So so I wrote and, and you know, you know me, I'm a nerd. I'm a techie nerd. I'm a you know, I'm not a writer. I don't get into this whole so I just kind of wrote up this basic, you know. You remember my first protocol. I do. I and I had it. That was the that was a protocol. I think it was just a do this, do this, do this, a run on sentences. Do this, do this, do this, and and it wasn't it wasn't really anything like what it looks like now because we had you know Catherine has helped edit it and make it nicer with bullet points. Well, the protocols are saying the words are, are there are more words have been added. But the right. protocols are saying. Yeah. So so you remember getting the protocol and so how so so how did so you started and 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 what did you do? I followed it. To, I followed it to the letter. Um, I you know I began with the testing and waited a half an hour and uh, I had help from a beekeeper friend who was oh, gracious right. enough to come bring his bees and sting me and he was interested in learning um, how to sting patients and he was interested in learning how to treat uh, Lyme with bee venom therapy and you know I'm, it, it's exciting but your protocol is being shared um, in the in these beekeeping groups with other beekeepers um, oh, nice. to treat Lyme disease. Nice. Yeah, and he's been teaching people. Nice. Um, what were your expectations when you first started doing this because I know everybody has like something in their head where they think okay this is what I can expect or this way or, or they don't know what to expect, or they're scared, or they're fearful, or what were your expectations when you first? I, I, you know, I, 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 I know I told you earlier, I, I was looking long term, you know, I was looking ahead, um, which was refreshing because with late stage line, looking ahead isn't something that, you know, is the, I like to do, because <laughs> yeah. looking ahead can be, um, and so I, I was expecting at the end of the year, to feel much better, you know. I, I remember you telling me the first year is hell. <laughs> it's rough. But by the end, by the end of the year, you'll be feeling you'll be feeling really well. You'll be feeling well, and that was my expectation that I would that I would feel improvement like within in a one year's time, which didn't seem that long to me because I've been dealing with this for what seventeen more than seventeen years. Right, and right. five long, years of long therapy. Time. So you know, just um, believing that I that you know in just one year that I was going to have improvement to me that was gold. And, uh, and I was thrilled that I, I felt improvement sooner than that. But that was my expectation, that uh, within a year, you know, one year, one year I'll be feeling better. And you, I mean, you really jumped right in there. Yeah. Like I said, I had several people started and, and, and so many of them stopped. You know, they're just like, oh, I don't really want to do this. Or maybe they weren't, I don't know, maybe they, I, whatever reasons, maybe they weren't that sick to begin with, or maybe they had to go through Lyme a few more years, or you know, realize how bad this can get before they're like, okay, maybe I need to do this. Really think about seriously doing this. But you are the first person who jumped in there and said, I'm committed, I'm doing this. And, and you, you've, come, you've come this far. And, and you've, you've, done, you've done this. So, you know, I, I keep, you, we, we see there's a lot of disinformation because it's growing yeah. exponentially. And there are, there are literally thousands of people doing this. And, and, and some people are jumping in and grabbing the protocol. It's been changed. People have taken it and tried to claim it, and and it, and, and, and it concerns me. It concerns me because you know my concern is that you know that there are people that may not reach full recovery. That this this may not work for them. Um, right. You know, as they deviate from from a protocol that we know that works. Right. Well, we've seen, and then I've well, I've seen, I've seen people who thought that you know staying at two stings for, for six months or a year, or that somehow they're going to recover, and they're not. They're, they're just not. You know, it's like going to the doctor and saying, I have a massive oozing infection, fix it, 
and the doctor prescribes, you know, antibiotic ointment cream or whatever and says, okay, put this on there three times a day. And the person says, oh, well, I don't want to do three times a day. I just want to do once a day. And then three months later, they still have this pussing, oozing wound. And they go back to the doctor and they're yelling at the doctor, this didn't work for me. And the doctor said, well, did you follow my instructions? Well, no, I did what I wanted to do and I should be fine. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of the same with, with the bee venom therapy. You know, it, with all the research and everything I had done and with all the time and energy and effort I put into putting this together, because the whole goal is to recover, right. not to drag out your suffering, right. not to drag out your, you know, it's to get to that point. I, to You know, one one of my biggest one of my biggest sayings to people is the doubles in the dosing. Right. You know, and I and I and I keep saying it. You know, too little will not heal you. You won't you won't recover. And too much it can kill you. Oh, yeah. I've had people in the beginning say, "Should I just go jump into a hive?" Well, that's not a good idea no. <laughs> because you might get one sting or you might get hundreds. And you know, we we don't want people to get harmed in this process and we don't, but we also want people to heal. And I think one of the, one of the main things that we're seeing is that some people are being told that, you know, we'll just do whatever you want. Just, you know, and, 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 and some of these people, they don't have Lyme disease. They, they've never suffered Lyme disease and they claim they were bitten and whatever, but they've never truly suffered through this. So one of the biggest concerns I have is that, like you said, people won't recover. People are not going to recover if they don't, stick with this program. Right, right. Well, I, I did, I, you know, I, I ramped up to 10. Um, I, I ramped every, every three sessions. Um, and I stuck with 10 and I, and I swam along the spine. I alternated the upper and lower back. You know, I, the, on one day I would do 10 stings above and the next session I would do 10 stings below. Like, you know, alternating above and below the bra. I, I kept moving the stings around. And I spent nothing but uh, along the spine, along the right neck of the spine, yeah. for six or seven months. So you were six or seven months and before you ever ventured out? Yes. Yeah, so and you... venturing out, I mean, I, I, I still stay along the spine. Um, I, I did work up higher on my neck and the base of my skull. And I did, uh, after seven months, I did, you know, some stings to the jaw because I had some issues there. Yeah. Um, and then... For the MS, I, you know, I did some stings to, you know, the feet. Right. Um, right. And that's not something that everybody needs to do. I don't think you did any. I, I didn't do any of my feet because I just had neuropathy. Like the horrid neuropathy where your feet go numb and then you get pins and needles and then it burns terrible and you can't walk. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, my neuropathy was so severe that I had to have heat on my feet at all times. I had these little heat packs that I used to have to pack in my shoes or my socks because I couldn't be away from heat. At night, yeah. I had to sleep with a heating pad. And um, wow. that neuropathy was resolved with just the spine sting. Just the spine sting? Yes. Yeah. Do you have any of that now? Do you have any neuropathy? Um, Do you have it? I, you know, every now and then, I get mild, I get a very, very mild. I haven't had my heating pad out since I can't, I don't even know where it is. So, <laughs> well, that's a good sign. <laughs> You've yeah. lost the heating pad. And I can walk around barefoot, you know, now with it, you know, and, and uh, so. Oh, that's great. I get, every now and then, I still get some very minor, and, but it's yeah. not constant, it's not ongoing, it's not severe. Um, but MS stuff is resolved, you know, my, my feet, I can, I know, you know, I wasn't able to lift my. Oh, right, you couldn't my, lift your, you couldn't pull your toes up. Right, and I can, your heels. I can do that now, um, you know, everything, everything works, you know, <laughs> everything's functioning. <laughs> it's nice when your things are functioning. It's nice when, yeah. It's you nice know, when, when your things are dysfunctioning, it's a little scary. <laughs> it's nice when everything works. I'm loving finding out everything works. You're you're in the midst of this still. I'm I'm you know I, I know everybody knows my story. Like I, I being attacked by the bees, there there was nobody to really guide me to really to really tell me anything. You know, it was kind of like. You know, I may be alive next month, and, and I may not. You know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to try this many bees, and well, that didn't work. Boy, that'll put you in a horrible herx, and nobody needs to feel that bad. And I would go back down to, okay, that's not enough, you know. So it was, for me, it was the whole trial and error and, and using myself as a guinea pig because I honestly didn't know if this would work. And, and I, I had no idea how long it would take, how, you know, when I should stop, if I should ever stop. Right. 
You know, I was always nervous that, gosh, if I stop this line, I'm coming back. Because I never want to go back to living like that again. I mean, I, I would end it. I, I would just end it. I would never go back to living in that hell. But, but there's been, yeah, as time goes on, I, you know, it was, I did the two and a half years, you know, I, the, the, the last half a year, I was tapering down. I would stop to check where I was at, waiting to see what's coming back. What's gonna, you know, what's gonna come back on me? And oh, I got my bees right here, you know, just just in case I need backup <laughs> bees. I got backup <laughs> bees. But so for six months, I mean, it was it was scary. After I did the I did full two years, and I knew at the two years I'm fine. I'm I'm really good. Like I wake up every day. I sleep every night. I didn't have any symptoms. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing was going on. And so. That So, so that six months, I was kind of trial and error, trial and error. Oh, I'll stop for three weeks and see what happens. And three weeks, I'm good. So it got to the point, like, two years and three months, I'm like, well, I'm just going to stop <laughs> for a month, and then I'm going to sting to see if I get hurt. So, you know? so I would sting, and nothing would happen. But I, you know, so I went through all that stuff, but there's so much time and distance going now. Like, I've been for almost two and a half years you know, getting back to a normal life, really getting over all the PTSD line created, all the fears, getting over the fact that I know I can drive across the country and be fine. Even in any emergencies, like I'm fine, I'm calm, I'm cool, I'm collected, I can handle things. Um, but time and distance is starting to go and, and I'm starting to, to realize that there, there just is no more line. But I mean, it's been four and a half years since the killer bee attack and stuff. And and, and I did, for me, it's, uh, if I wasn't so involved in the Lyme community and wanting everyone to do baby venom therapy, if I wasn't so involved with, God, let's not let one more, more person pass away from this. Let's make sure that everybody knows that this is an option. You know, and that's why I spent so much time doing, trying to get the story out and doing PR and, and trying to help as many people as I can be, and raise awareness if, if I wasn't so involved with that, I would, I think at this point, I would almost forget that that line was even, it's not a part of my life anymore. Right. My life doesn't revolve around line. You know how we get to the point where your entire life revolves around managing your symptoms? Well, it's so in your face. Trying to find your treatment. There's no, there's, there's no not thinking about it because it's so in your face. You're navigating your life around this disease. Right. And, and I, you know, I'm still treating, you know, I saw the ways to go. You're still doing the B-Venom therapy. I'm full recovery. So, you know, I, I feel well now. I'm not in pain. I feel healthy. Right. Um, and there's so, there's still a lot of unknowns. Like I had, I had Babesia and Borrelia burgdorferi, the, the largest spirea, right. like you had the bullseye rash and that, and, and, and that I know, and, but you have Bartonella. Bartonella. And Mycoplasma. We're seeing and microplasma and this and this unknown, <laughs> the unknown virus, and we're so we're learning so much right. also as we go and and I think with you being the first one doing this with Bartonella, and then seeing several other people in our groups who also have Bartonella, it seems that Bart Bart's a little trickier. If Bart took a little longer. It took longer. Um, the last time I saw my doctor, she you know she she agreed that the Bartonella has been addressed. I I no longer have any Bartonella symptoms. None. You have no Bartonella None. symptoms. Do you, do you remember when that kind of ended? And no, it's, it, it, see, for me, about I can't like... It was about eight to ten months. Eight to ten months. Eight to ten months. And, and okay. Maybe not ended, but much better. For me, I mean, the Bartonella, I, had, I, I was dealing with um, depersonalization. Um, okay. Cognitive stuff with the Bartonella. Um, um, deep, deep bone pain, because the Bartonella affected my bone and bone marrow. Right. right. So the pain and... Um, the sensitivity to pressure changes and all of that, I was dealing with all that. That's all been resolved. I mean, you know, full moon, moon bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, it's raining. Like, it's a full it's moon. I'm like, oh, is it? People should know it's raining here. It's been storming all day. So. It has yeah. been. Yeah, that's why I got my jacket on. Still, I'm, I'm freezing. My Arizona bones are just cold. So I'm, I'm trying to stay warm in this weather. But um, and that's amazing. See, because we, we are learning so much as we go. Well, even and, though I'm not. I, you know, I have a ways to go that, you know, to fit with this, with this protocol. If I weren't working with, with Lyme, if I weren't, if I weren't stinging people and, you know, 
in working, I could easily forget that I have Lyme disease. I could easily forget that I had anything, you know, wrong with me. Wow. Um, it, it just isn't, because, I, I, you know, I don't, I, I feel well. Yeah. See, I kind of just, I, I, I eat whatever I want now. I mean, I was literally was down to, and I joke about this, because I felt like I was literally down to just sucking on spinach leaves. <laughs> I joke, but when I was kind of, after the 10-year period of Lyme and Babs, getting into the 12th, 13th, 14th year, I literally couldn't eat anything. I mean, no dairy, no, no meat, I mean, no fish. Every single thing it seemed like I was going to react to at that point. I was down to sucking on spinach leaves and having soup. And now it's like, oh, what do I want for dinner? Anything I want. Give me some bread with the, you know, olive oil and the, oh gosh, give me cookies, give me ice cream, give me cheese and crackers, give me, I don't even have to think about it right. anymore. Right. It's not even a thought. It's like, what do I feel like eating? in and out burger, where, where am I? What part of the country am I in? Oh, Chick-fil-A. That sounds good. You know, I, I, it's, it's not even... It's not even on my radar anymore. I mean, I stay away from GMOs, and, and I do eat healthy for the most part. You know, I right. eat healthy food, mostly organic and stuff like that. But you don't, there's not a, a price to pay with a really high interest rate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I can just go, hmm, not going to have whatever I want, really. And, you know, if I need to stop and get something really quick and it's, it's not that healthy for me, well, it's not the end of the world. Right. I'm not going to pay for it for weeks. You know, the nice thing is, is we're talking about, you know, everybody understands who's had Lyme for any long period of time, how we navigate it. Right. How you have to, every, your every thought, everything you eat, everything you're going to do, socializing. We were just talking about socializing. You know, if you spend 15 minutes talking to somebody, I used to zone out and just get exhausted. I'd have to take a nap if, if I wanted to have any kind of social interactions or stuff. And, and now I don't even think about it. Like I can sit, well, you, I can sit and talk to some for hours and hours, and, I, <laughs> and it's true, because I'm enjoying it, and I know I'm not, there's no price to pay for any of it. I can eat everything I want, I can, I can go out, and I went out dancing for the first time in a long time, just last month, and oh my gosh, I was dancing myself, oh, it was great, hours. <laughs> Uh, you, did a waggle dance. you know, I did. I did. I had to do the big waggle dance because I'm so happy. <laughs> I had to do the wee waggle dance just, just to, you know. But, 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 to, but I don't even have to think about. Oh my gosh, am I going to be able to function tomorrow? Because I know I'm going to go to bed, sleep a good six, seven, eight hours straight, and wake up rested and wake yeah. up fine. Okay, that's something else I did. I didn't mention it. sleep, sleep, the elusive sleep. Um, that was one of my time. earlier things that, that did resolve was sleep. Um, I was, I, I, I remember, I mean, probably five months ago, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember going to sleep. And we're back. <laughs> so, so we've covered a lot of ground. In this and, and I think it's exciting and I, I think it's really important that we document it now because in another t two years you're gonna be where I am it's all gonna start becoming just a memory we're gonna start forgetting oh right I used to feel like hell and now I feel great but I think you know uh, one of the issues I'm running into with some people is they don't understand that um, you know in in Western medicine okay you and I both know Western medicine they treated the symptoms so everybody's treating symptoms treating symptoms treating symptoms or they're treating things that they hope will help or that may help for a little bit. Or... I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even go so far as say treating symptoms. I would say suppressing symptoms. Suppressing. It's, it's suppressing. Because, you know, in, in, in Lyme, we, we heard it for years. It's, it's on all the Lyme groups. It's on the, every single person who's been in Lyme for any period of time. Well, the one, the one sentence, and, and it just does not apply to, to this vegan on therapy that I keep hearing over and over and I've heard for years and even thought I was one of them is, well, everybody's different. Everybody presents with different symptoms. Everybody, you know, and yes, it's true. The symptoms are different for each person and everybody's different. Nobody's, no people are, two people are genetically identical. Um, but I don't think people really understand that 
bee venom is actually addressing the underlying cause right. of however it's presenting in you. Each person might present different symptoms, but the bee venom is actually getting to the causation, the causative agent of those symptoms. Right. The symptoms are not the disease. You know, I think the other thing, and I think it's, I think a lot of people in, in Western culture, and that they don't understand about holistic, some holistic therapies like human therapy, is that it's not just about killing the pathogens. It's also about bringing balance to the body and giving your body what it needs to heal itself. Yeah. So you know, it's, right. it's not just it's not just killing pathogens. There's right. a lot more going on with late stage Lyme disease than, you know, pathogens. Well, your body is completely out of balance. Right. Every, every system in your entire body has been forced to become dysfunctional. Right. Your thyroid shuts down. I, I was, you know, thyroid meds. Well, I had adrenal fatigue I, when I began BVT. So you did have adrenal fatigue. I did. I had adrenal fatigue and, um, you know, uh, low-dose steroid was prescribed. Um, okay, right. right. A lot of people are taking that. Right. I, adrenal I, fatigue. Personally, I chose to decline. I didn't do it, um, but the BBT did balance my adrenal. My adrenals are good now, they're fine. Oh, wow. Well, but I, I went into this with adrenal fatigue. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, so, I mean, I, we have all these, you know, years of Lyme causes so much disruption in the body. You know, cognitive function, thyroid, adrenals. I mean, it, it really affects every single system. Your lymphatic system, you know, the lymphatic drainage. I mean, every, everything gets backed up. You're, your menstrual cycles, everything, nothing hormones, working right. nothing's working right. Everything is so dysfunctional. I mean, if 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 you were to take something for every single symptom for everything, I mean, you, you would. You'd be taking sixty seven pills a day. I did. That's exactly right. Along with all your herbs and subs and this, you know. But the nice thing is, is that um, with with the what I'm seeing in myself and and several other people and then like you too is that. Bee venom really brings that. It forces your body to to heal itself and to bring it back into that balance. It does. You know, I, I you know a lot of people start off and they're on a lot of things and then and as they let go of the things, they're actually becoming they're getting better and better and better as they're able to let go of of a lot of the things that they that they learned to depend on to to be okay. Whether it was antidepressants or or lots of antibiotics and, and you know, um, pain pills and, I mean, there's a laundry list of things that pretty much every Lyme patient ends up on. Um, but as they let those things go, as, as they progress in the bee venom therapy and they let those things go, they're progressing better and better. It's really forcing the body to come back into balance. Which is nice, because I, you know, I haven't been on anything in so long. I think I've, I've had to take Advil maybe twice in the last two and a half years for a headache or something. Because I, everything is working, everything is functioning on its own. I, I think now. it's been about ten months since I took anything. I haven't eaten anything. Yeah, wow. Well, it's been about ten months. Ten months. I think so. Yeah, it was almost seven. Yeah, yeah it's been ten months since I've, I've needed any medication. So we have covered so much ground. And we've had a lot of discussions since I've been here, and what a blessing this has been to meet you in person for the first time <laughs> in all this time. My, my sister in BBT, you know, in, in recovery from Lyme, and what a blessing this has been. I mean, I know I, know I can say that, you know, I'm, you know I, am, I thoroughly enjoy every day of my life now. Every day. I, I don't, I don't, my life doesn't revolve around Lyme anymore, and it hasn't for quite some time. I haven't had any symptoms, I haven't had anything, I haven't had anything to even suggest that I may even be sick or, or any of that stuff, so every day I get up knowing that I'm going to have a quality of life today. Me too. Thank you, Al. Isn't it amazing? Thank you, Al. Oh, God, thank you, Nancy. What a blessing. Life is beautiful, isn't it? It is. Life is good. We just want that for everyone else, too.